so we live now 103 that's 13 on the queen mother seals and i'm gonna do some invites because today we're receipts we cashing in the receipts on the free larry hoover situation so these people will understand that we ain't making none of this shit up it's no secret in our community who our leadership is and other people outside of our community also know who our leaders are. They just laughing at us because we don't. And leaders is only as much of a leader as they people are allowed to um, stand up with their leaders. And on the land, on our culture, before anybody came over here, when the leader stood up, the clan stood up, period. When the leader was in distress, the clan was in distress. Ain't no big eyes and ain't no little yous. Ain't no favoritism or none of that, right? So just to give y'all a little insight, we got a white gangster disciples, right? The um, lighter skin under the Peacestone Nation normally fall under the Latin Kings. The almighty Latin kings are our Spanish-speaking tribesmen from varying Spanish-speaking nations. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Mexicans. Um, MS-13. MS-13 is Miss 13, meaning Miss Queen Mother. And they're talking about the Great Mother. Um, when they say um, Vato Loco, you know, they talking about the sacred clown doing the crazy man dance. And we all not in this shit um, by accident. These motherfuckers got us here with a well-orchestrated plan. So we're going to go over some um, other um, angles to look at the situation from a leadership standpoint. Right? So we about to cash in some uh, free Larry Hoover receipts today. So somebody asked me, well, why Farrakhan ain't said nothing if he know? Well, maybe he did, but y'all ain't listening. Harry Hoover changed the aim of the so-called gangster disciple. Harry Hoover changed the aim of the so-called gangster disciples to growth and development and began to guide them into absolutely a good things you arrested him in prison and gave him four or five life sentences why did you do that you were afraid so that's um that's fair kind on larry hoover I don't know if y'all seen it, but Al Prophet on American Dope did an episode about Larry Hoover. And in this episode, he, he went to Paul Scenario. Offered to get Hoover out of jail. Larry Hoover was pretty sophisticated too, though. He had a paid mole of his own feeding him information. His Lieutenant Gregory Shell's lover was a Chicago policewoman assigned to the gang unit. She ended up getting 12 years in prison. D. Blunt Johnson's attorney had someone inside the government providing him details of ongoing investigations focused on the GD nation. Um, for example, the DEA planted a uh, surveillance device in Junie Shrimp on the Nine to try to get Shell. They hit it in a clock just hours after they been proven in court, and only Pops Johnson got in. Oh, shit. See, they telling us, but we ain't paying attention. I want to get closer to the end of the video because he, he give a little, uh, he give a little discourse at the end about Larry. Or he was somehow related. It'd be interesting to find out. I have no idea. Um, the Operation Headache case. 
hit on the morning of August 31st, 95. King Larry Hoover was awakened by DEA agents inside his prison cell at the Dixon Correctional Center in Illinois. They took him back to Chicago for booking and arraignment on federal charges on a government airplane. It was the first time that the legendary gang overlord had ever flown on an airplane. Just remember, he went to prison as a very young man. Larry Hoover was guilty at a 1997 trial. And today, as I said in the beginning, he lives in the most secure prison in North America, the Alcatraz of the Rockies, Florence AT ADX. Larry Hoover, truly the black godfather, buried alive. So, <clears throat> we see what they're saying. He called him, now this is an Italian guy who sit at the table with families from Italy. Right, when we call these uh, La Cosa Nostra, you know, um, they refer to themselves as La Familia, or the same as what they would say in Latin, the family, or the, um, the, the round table. So, when we going through these receipts, and we looking at what's being told, the most telling is when we get to uh, Chief Malik Angel Bay. So this one, uh, this one got a lot of good information. This is the Moore's so flag. Let it, play. it is a red flag with a green five-pointed star in the center. The red represents the blood that was shed by our forefathers defending the principles of this flag, and the green represents the richness of the land. The following clip is not to be glorified, but only to show what can happen when we stray from the temple and allow love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice to become violated. What kind of flag is the Moors? It's a red flag with a five-point green star in the center. What do the five points represent? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Jeff Foote walked out the doors of Leavenworth Penitentiary a changed man. He had built himself up physically and adopted what he said was a new spirituality. He had converted to Islam and wanted the entire nation to embrace his new values. What happened? They're more media oriented. They're more, you know, if it's in the video, I want to do it. Bling, bling. You know, uh, I want to live like Tony Montana. I want to live like Scarface. So they're more into that than into being what they That's should Rogers, be into. That's the OG that went to organized the blood. That's the first. The living Pharaoh, that's what you shall be. I'm here to prepare part two of a Blackstone Mammoth Speaks Out. And uh, basically, I got a few topics that I want to cover with you all. And uh, what I'm going to start off with is love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The Black Peace Stone Nation represents love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They are the five highest principles known to man. The Prophet Noble Dr. Ali broke it down and brought it to everyone. And into being what they should be into, which is love, peace, truth, freedom, and justice. And into being what they should be into. But just love, peace, truth, freedom, and justice. Tells the almighty black peace donation. With that peace stood for progress, society, power, peoples. By the late 1960s, membership in the stone swelled to nearly 5,000. Gang leader Jeff Ford created an inner council to maintain control over the different sects and govern their activities. They called it the Main 21. COINTELPRO stands for Counterintelligence Program, which was primarily run by the FBI as a covert action program against domestic dissidents. The use of infiltration, psychological warfare, harassment through the legal system, and the use of extralegal force and violence, including... The average American would be so shocked to find out there's something called COINTELPRO. The FBI's covert action programs against American citizens. That's the name of their document, the government document, not mine. In the summer of 1967, the police department created a special gang intelligence unit to gather information on the inner workings of the Stones. What they learned was terrifying. The gang was run like an army. Because there's no point in letting him put out his COINTELPRO. What's COINTELPRO? That was an FBI program. Every time blacks or other groups in the 60s would get together and really start feeding homeless and soup kitchens and getting communities together and getting kids off welfare, system and like that, or getting kids out of crime, 
they'd come in and radicalize and tell one black leader the other black leader is talking bad about you and get those two fighting. And they do that over and over again. Soldiers in the nation were expected to follow a military-style ranking system and operate under a strict code governing their behavior. You couldn't never mess with another man's woman. Robbery, home invasions, all that was in the moment. It was pillar talking. Pillar talking is when you're telling your woman what's going on with the nation. That's not for a woman to know. Homosexuality, that was a no-no. They were also forbidden to use drugs harder than marijuana. All your members will be smoking drugs, and before you know it, you have a drug-fed organization. So you can't have it like that. Breaking the rules resulted in a violation. It's just another night on Chicago's South Side. Mobster Al Capone may have run this town in the 20s. But for three decades, a vicious street gang had the city in a stranglehold. They called themselves the Black Keystone Nation. They claimed to be about brotherhood. You know, we were doing it for what we believe in. They, they died from one another, stung to the bone. They say they were the saviors of the streets. We start out as a gang. We protected the store owners. We protected the women, the, the mothers, the families. And into being what they should be into, which is love, peace, truth, freedom, and justice. The Black Peace Stone Nation represents love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They are the five highest principles known to man. Because there's no point in letting him put out his COINTELPRO. What's COINTELPRO? That was an FBI program. Every time blacks or other groups in the 60s would get together and really start feeding homeless at soup kitchens and getting communities together and getting kids off welfare, system didn't like that, or getting kids out of crime, they'd come in and radicalize and tell one black leader the other black leader's talking bad about you and get those two fighting. And they do that over and over again. This guy, FBI agent. You told. also were active in the infiltration of uh, many cultural groups. Before we go into that step-by-step, like step, how the rest. much research and study did the FBI engage in of black culture in the late 60s? A great amount. Give me an idea. Uh, from the thing is, I, I, I can, uh, they have a file on every type of magazine uh, that blacks read. They have a file on, on, on the music. Music? Uh, music, dance. Theater, uh, actors, the comedians, you name it, man. And they would actually study these? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. What would they do with music? Uh, to understand the people, you have to understand the culture. To infiltrate, you have to understand. You had a lot of so-called white liberals that were infiltrating the so-called uh, black groups using the uh, uh, information that they had gathered from the studies of blacks. Um, you mean just to understand the behavior pattern of our people? Oh, yeah. I can, uh, you know, Will Heaton could name out some jams of Miles Davis that I hadn't even heard of. My situations is trash. Come on, man. Like, don't get it twisted or confused, man. And for all my father, I come through. I come through. That's my flag right there. You see that? I can claim that. I'm a grand sheep. And were known as soldiers and referred to their group as the nation. Their symbol, an Egyptian pyramid, reflected their African heritage. Over the years, they wore a variety of uniforms, but always in their chosen colors. Red, black, and green. I went to one nation. And into being what they should be into, which is love, peace, truth, freedom, and justice. <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah,
So <clears throat> we see I'm not just making this shit up. Um telling y'all that this is our culture that's been infiltrated. So the one guy was a FBI agent going over all of the different files that they have. Like so when we tell y'all all of this shit is documented <clears throat> in the FBI files, in the COINTEL profiles. With the list of all of the names of the leaders they wanted out of the community. Right? These is just two of the most potent leaders that we picked from among us. And that was assaulted by the system. The system is not our system. They are invaders. They are foreign body politic operating as a government um, in corporate status as a legal fiction. On the land interfering with the pr progress of the people of the land. Right, so so the um the 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 things that we being faced with is these people are telling us they know who the kings on the land is, but do you do you know who um the tribal chieftains is that's the caretakers of the land that's been indisposed by the invaders. So, if you understand what's taking place, then it'll help you see clearer where we going with this shit. You know? So, cashing in the receipts. That's your Larry Hoover straight from the mouth of Farrakhan. That's a little short couple minute documentary on on all this shit on youtube this ain't this shit ain't hard to find right um that was that was the documentary was called t rogers chief malik um what uh, right so we going through we dealing with all these um situations of people in our community that don't belong here like I told you, the um the dude in there that was the FBI agent, his job was to infiltrate um black organizations. He got a whole interview, um, black FBI agent exposing um his role in COINTELPRO. Um so the question was, is Larry free yet? Uh free is when we see him, we know he's free. If we don't see him, we don't know he's free. So until we see him make a public appearance, which should be any day now, we can't say he's free until we demand that he get free. We got to keep pushing the motherfucking envelope. I ain't seen him. I ain't seen him on no news. I ain't seen him on emergency broadcast, none of that. So I can't say he's free. But I can tell you this, we not going to stop until he is. Because th this is our shit. And, and they already have it on record, the dirt they did to keep us indisposed and ignorant to who we are. This shit is all on record. Ain't none of it guesswork. It's documented, and not only is it documented, it's well documented. Um, My last two IG videos, well, IG decided that they didn't want it on, on replay. So, y'all missed the Ramona Africa video so i'm going to play ramona africa again on this one right and um this is just because i'm stubborn like that and um um determined like that sent to, to prison get, to get the uh sentenced to 30 to 100 years the so this is the philadelphia on movie. air Online, on demand. Watch AFR right, when so you want, where you want, Sister with CNN, Ramona the Africa Comcast the interview, Network. Explaining what went on in Philadelphia. 
And hello, everyone. I'm Art Fennell. Thanks for joining us for The Report. I want to begin today by turning back the pages of history to a dramatic and deadly event that put the city of Philadelphia in the national spotlight and for all the wrong reasons. It was 1985 when a bomb was dropped on the compound of the radical back to nature group called MOVE. And it happened right in the heart of a residential neighborhood. Eleven people, including five children, were killed and 61 homes, an entire city block, destroyed from that incident. That was 23 years ago, but for many, the firestorm of this controversy is still burning today. <laughs> to understand what happened in May of 1985, you have to actually go back seven years prior to that, when MOVE was involved in an altercation resulting in the death of a Philadelphia police officer. Nine members of the group were tried and convicted and sentenced to 30 to 100 years in prison. Well, last month they had their first parole hearing and they were denied. Ramona Africa is a member of the MOVE organization and was in the house when the bomb was dropped back in 1985. And she's a procedure that still has her family members locked up some 30 years later. Ramona, thanks for being a part of the program. Thanks for the opportunity to inform your audience about what's going on here. Well, what I want to do is try and cover as much ground as we can in the time that we have. Let's begin by, by saying that uh, in 1985, the bomb was dropped on Philadelphia, as we, as we showed, and dropped on the MOVE compound. But tell me what happened, in your opinion, in the incident in 1978 that resulted in the uh, death of a police officer. Well, what happened is because MOVE tells the truth and speaks out about the injustices and racism in the system and could not be stopped, could not be bought off, could not be beat into submission, uh, the government just basically decided that they needed to exterminate MOVE. And they used the excuse of an eviction that MOVE would not leave our home you know, uh, under an eviction as an excuse to come out and not arrest, but to kill move people. And this was uh, <coughs> under the administration of the uh, Frank, Frank, Frank Rizzo. Rizzo. That's uh, right. In 1978. Like and so the, 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 the police department, the city of Philadelphia, came to, your, to, to the home of, of the MOVE organization and actually bulldozed the home down. That's correct. And we're looking at some of the old footage here that has uh, uh, the fire hoses and so forth on the compound. This was in 1978. That's correct. And it's very important to understand two things. One, it was the Philadelphia Police Department and the Fire Department that was used to attack MOVE. And you're absolutely correct in that MOVE's home was demolished uh, within hours after my family was arrested. And this is very important because there was a court order from a judge named Calvin Wilson that that house was not to be touched. There was going to be a hearing on what was happening with that house. Despite that, and despite the fact that it had now become a crime scene, the scene of a crime where a police officer was killed, they just completely demolished it, which is destroying evidence, destroying and, the scene. And Ramona, were, were you in the <clears throat> compound in 1978 when that no, shootout took not. place? No, um, I was from, not. from what you were told, from your understanding of it, did the members of the MOVE organizations, were they firing weapons back at police as they were being fired upon? Not to my knowledge, but to me, that's not even an issue. People question whether MOVE had guns, whether MOVE was shooting. But understand, we were in our home minding our business when hundreds of cops and firefighters and federal uh, agents attacked us, came out to our home. We didn't go to their home. Right. They came out to our home attacking us. Ramona, I want to I want to read a statement um, for you uh, from the uh, Fraternal Order of Police and just get your response to this. Just follow along with me here because mm -hmm. we did ask them for their side of this story. And this statement comes from Michael Lutz, who's the vice president of the Philadelphia Fraternal Order of Police. He says, my memory of the move shootout on all August 8, 1978, was unforgettable, etched in my mind even more that day as seeing police officer Jim Ramp being shot to death, along with the pain and suffering of three other police stakeout officers and four firefighters who were all seriously wounded as a result of being shot during confrontation. He goes on to say... Oh, excuse me, y'all.
to say, confiscated from the move compound after the surrender of the occupants uh, were 10 firearms and 200 rounds of ammunition. And this proves without a shadow of a doubt, he says, that their intentions were obvious. They were malicious intent and they wanted to kill police. To this day, the MOVE members who conspired to kill Officer Ramp during the armed confrontation in which they initiated never acknowledged the crimes they committed. They have not told the truth about the events of that day. They have never apologized, nor have they shown any remorse for their murderous actions. Once again, with the violent and history of the background of the subject MOVE members, it is our firm belief that their release from prison would definitely jeopardize the safety and well-being of the citizens of Philadelphia. Uh, your response to that. Oh gosh, where do I start? First and foremost, remorse, taking responsibility. When is this government ever going to show any remorse and take responsibility for what it has done? I mean, pregnant move women were beat, stomped, kicked in the miscarriage. A three-week-old baby was trampled to death, all by police. We didn't go out. We wanted to kill cops. Why didn't we go to where cops are? We didn't go to their homes, to the, their police stations or anything. They came out to our home armed for war. Cops testified that they emptied their guns into the basement of our home where they heard babies crying. They couldn't see too good because of the tear gas and it was dark. They emptied their guns, refilled them, and emptied them again in corners where they heard babies crying. What was moved even you know, being arrested for. Why were they out there? For yeah. an eviction? And right. this is what they do, but they want move to talk about remorse. Well, and and right that there, we and Ramona, Ramona, Let me just make one more point. Because the I want to talk about The judge who presided remorse. over that trial, at the end of that trial, at the end of them presenting all their evidence, said he didn't have the faintest idea who killed Okay, now let's get to the issue of remorse, because again, 30 years later, the first parole hearing for the Move 9, as it was called, as the group was called, the Move 9, the ones who were sent to prison, uh, sentenced to 30 to 100 years. The first parole hearing, some 30 years later, just passed, and they were denied. And you say part of the reason they were denied is because they still don't show remorse. You say they don't show remorse because they're not guilty. Absolutely. Yes, they had their first parole hearing after 30 years, on their minimum of 30 years. And the main reason that they were denied parole, and it says it right on their parole papers, that they, quote unquote, refused to take responsibility and admit guilt. I mean, first of all, if you're not guilty, why would you say you are? Second of all, has the parole board ever heard of the First Amendment since when? Does any agency of this government have the right that you say you're guilty, particularly if you're not, but even if you are? The Fifth Amendment says that they cannot even make you say you're guilty or demand that you say you're guilty, even if you are. So what Let happens now? What not. happens now, Ramona? Where, where, this is my final question, but what will the MOVE organization do at this point? It's been 30 years, and they're still behind bars, and it seems as though this issue is still as hot as it ever was. What will the MOVE members do now? We're coming after, after the parole board and their bosses, because what they're doing is patently illegal, unconstitutional, and we intend to come after them, expose them, and talk about taking responsibility of being held accountable, we're going to hold them accountable. Right, Ramona Africa, thank you very much for sharing your time with me on this topic. Again, it's a very passionate debate that has lingered in the city of Philadelphia for a very long time, and as I said, it uh, doesn't seem as though it's uh, going to be ending anytime soon. Keep us posted on your endeavors. Uh, Absolutely. We do appreciate it. Thank you. All right, on the move. So, at some point, we got to say enough is enough, right? So, the police... <clears throat> Go in these people's house, shoot these motherfuckers up like they in a full-fledged war. And then the judge say, because all of the shooting going on, he don't know, with all the evidence presented, who actually shot the cop. Now, what they don't tell you is they never identify which gun the police officer was shot from. Right? They, they pulled 10 guns from the house. But they never said it was this gun that we pulled from the house. That Now, we know what ballistics is. And we know the ballistics will tell you which gun it came from. 
Remember Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, right? Laying there, Flintstone mama pregnant with him. She like seven months pregnant. And so we at war with these people. We don't know we at war. They know we at war, but they didn't trick our kids into thinking we ain't at war. That this is normal and this is the way this shit go, right? We didn't wage war on them. They wage war on us. We are the defenders in this situation. And the great defenders say, fuck these motherfuckers. Tell them to get the fuck off the land. Free Larry Hoover. Get this shit out in the fucking public. Get it out in the public domain. Everybody that understand the problem on your platform should be expressing what the problem is and what the solution is. That is clear. There are foreign actors on our land masquerading as our government. This foreign agent on our land is a legal corporation, a legal fiction called a straw man. The straw man has no jurisdiction over the juristic person, which is the de jure, which is the rightful people. The artificial fiction had created other artificial fiction called straw men under the um, Birth Certificate Act, the Federal Reserve Act, the Social Security Act, the Buck Act. The creature from Jekyll Island, what they call the Federal Reserve Act, is the means by which they lure us into a false sense of wealth. All these $30 million slaves, when this fiat system fall, can end up being in poverty. Right? So this is why you tell these motherfuckers, if you plan on being on this land, when we get done moving these invaders off this land, you're going to push the agenda of the people of the land, clean cross the land, and we not backing the fuck down. We will heckle every fucking celebrity until they using their platform. Because they got a further reach to our people than any individual one of us. So, you had celebrities already sending messages back. They code it. Fuck a code. I don't want no more code. Don't send me no more code, Snoop. Don't send me no more codes, Royce. M, don't send me no motherfucking code. Speak the fuck up. The shit going down now. And all you motherfuckers with a platform need to be screaming the same thing in solidarity with the people of the land. It's just that simple. Right? Y'all remember um, the uh, Judas and the Messiah, right? The Fred Hampton story, how they had the Negro and creeping around getting intel on what's going on in the inner workings of the party. So, Malcolm came out and said that the nation of Islam was thoroughly infiltrated by the FBI and the police. Why did he say that? Why did he say that? They thoroughly infiltrated. Right? They thoroughly infiltrated. That mean these motherfuckers is deeply embedded, but y'all not paying attention because the fall of the nation allows the nation to be rebuilt without the dirty actors in power positions. But y'all don't see that shit. Y'all only see what the government tell y'all to see. And as long as y'all following for the illusion, y'all won't never see the man behind the curtain. Well, now we at the point where we about to get Big Mama shit, and Big Mama said these motherfuckers got to get off the land. All over this bitch, 360 around the globe. So the ones who belong here that sold us out will be beheaded. The ones who belong here and crossed us out, they won't be able to continue on in this existence. They will have to come back again and try it from scratch when we done cleaned all this dumb shit up. Right? For the ones who don't belong here, right, it's motherfuckers waiting to take them off world. It's that simple. The women are called in for their ancestors, and the ancestors is up there waiting on us to <clears throat> organize. Organize and organize. It ain't time to tear nothing up, because I'd have been towed up already. It's shit too easy, and you won't have to. And besides... Sun Tzu say in the art of war, the greatest strategy is for the general to win the war without ever having to resort to combat. So, applying that general rule, 
all we have to do is become consciously aware who the kings on the land is, that they're indisposed by somebody that don't belong on the land. <coughs> they violated every treaty agreement they made, which give us the position over all of the treaties. Even though we didn't sign them, contrary to popular opinion, we didn't sign no treaties with them motherfuckers. They brought motherfuckers over here, put them in and declared they was indigenous under the Dawes Act. And under the Dawes Act, they made treaties with Dawes Row Indians that had nothing to do with us. We was already here before all that shit came over here. When the Dawes Row Indians discovered what was going on, well, they got to keep our secrets. They got to keep our shit from falling under, right? So we know what the fuck going on. Well, whatever, whatever Kamala is, Kamala working for us. And, um, yeah, Big Mama listening to us. The more of us just become aware of what's taking place in real time, the more effective this shit gonna be. Right? So, we've been watching these motherfuckers slaughter us. Right? They, they slaughter us. If they scared of us, they just kill, they don't just kill us regular. They kill us in what you call fantastic form. They had a, like, for instance, <clears throat> Joseph Sinku, um, his last name was DeFreeze. Joseph Sinku, they blowed that nigga up. They blowed his whole house up. Fuck that motherfucker. We not finna shoot it out with him. We not finna take him alive. Just blew their ass up. I'm gonna show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. Y'all need to know that I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Because all these other motherfuckers saying that they think they don't think I know what I'm talking about. Or they want to dispute with me without doing no background research, right? Well, I'm a researching motherfucker. I do it because I'm into that shit. So we look up Joseph Sinku and we're going to see what come up. SLA. His name and his group was the Symbionese Liberation Army. Right? Those who would bear the hopes that the voice of their guns express the words of freedom. Greetings to the people and fellow comrade, brothers and sisters. My name is Sin Q and to my comrades I am known as Sin. I am a black man and a representative of black people. I hold the rank of General Field Marshal in the United Federated Forces of the Symbionese Liberation Army. Today I have received an order from the Symbionese War Council, the Court of the People, to the effect that I am ordered to convey the following message in behalf of the SLA and to insert a tape word of comfort and verification that Patricia Campbell Hurst is alive and safe. The Symbionese Liberation Army is the federated union of military political elements of many di different liberation struggles and of many different races. Our unified purpose is to liberate the oppressed peoples of this nation and to aid other oppressed people around the world in their struggle against fascist imperialism and the robbery of their freedom and homeland. Since this is the purpose and goal of the SLA, it is therefore clear to us, as it will be to all oppressed people, that our interest is to serve and defend the people and not ourselves, since the people shall always come first in our hearts and souls. The SLA has arrested the subject for the crimes that her mother and father have by their actions committed against we the American people and the oppressed people of the world. In understanding this charge we must first understand who the Hearsts are and who they serve and represent. Randall 
Rudolf A. Hearst is the corporate chairman of the fascist media empire of the ultra-right Hearst Corporation, which is one of the largest propaganda institutions of this present military dictatorship of the militarily armed corporate state that we now live under in this nation. The primary goal of this empire is to serve and form the necessary propaganda and smokescreen to shield the American people from seeing the realities of the corporate dictatorship which Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford represent. This network of propaganda and confusion has succeeded in hiding the truth from the people. So that truth being that this nation has suffered its first military corporate coup and that the Constitution which some of us still believe in has been overthrown. The Fascist Hearst Corporation is composed of, firstly, a national newspaper syndicate which includes the San Francisco Examiner and Chronicle and others which jump from California and to as far away as New York and Philadelphia. Secondly, a magazine monopoly composed of over 13 publications which include, for example, House Beautiful, Harper's Bazaar, Town and Country, and Cosmopolitan. Thirdly, a TV and radio station empire across the nation with production of propaganda films for both national and international use. Fourth, ownership of vast areas of real estate in the United States and Mexico, forests, grassland, and cattle farms. All of this is directly connected to Washington and the corporate dictatorship of Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. That is to say that the Hearst Empire is one of the empires of the ruling class and whose interests serves the rich and are in direct contradiction with the interests of the people. Therefore, they are enemies of the people. Mrs. Randall A. Hearst is a member of the University of California Board of Regents and is responsible along with others appointed by Governor Ronald Reagan for the loaning of funds and the investments of our California tax monies in corporations which have interest and do gain profit from the robbery, oppression, and genocide carried out by fascist and racist governments around the world and within the United States itself. The regents, with the support of Mrs. Hurst, have time and time again been requested by we, the people, to not invest our money in such fascist corporations as General Motors, Westinghouse, Gulf, Standard Oil, Bank of America, and others, who have and do serve and gain profit from the oppression, robbery, and murder that is committed against black people of South Africa where 70,000 black children a year die from malnutrition against white people of Ireland where U.S. trained British soldiers shoot down in the street Irish fathers and mothers as U.S. manufactured tear gas suffocates, suffocates Irish children as their older sisters and brothers rot in British concentration camps against the freedom of the Philippine people where United States and Marcos puppet soldiers use U.S. manufactured napalm to attempt to burn away the spirit of freedom from the hearts and souls of the poor and starving. The UC Board of Regents, one of California's largest foreign investors, supports through its investments the murder of thousands of black men, women, and children of Mozambique, Angola, and Rhodesia. Murders designed to destroy the spirit that all humanity longs for. With all these crimes placed before the Board of Regents and Mrs. Hearst, with all the pleas from the people to stop supporting these corporations, and the murder of thousands of men, women, and children, the Board and Mrs. Hearst did not raise one voice in protest or refuse to be a party to these crimes committed against these people 
and those committed against the American people. Through these acts and others, the court of the people hold the Hearst family accountable for their crimes and hold that they are enemies of the people. We of the Symbionese Liberation Army hold that the Hearst Corporation and the Hearst family and the Board of Regents as well as the corporate states which they support and aid are enemies of the people. And as such, that the people have the legal and human right and duty to attack said enemy according to the forms of war taken by the oppressed people against any enemy or murderer and oppressor to regain their freedom and liberty and we give life to their children and people. It is therefore the directive of this court that before any form of negotiation for the release of the subject prisoner be initiated, that an action of good faith be shown on the part of the Hearst family to allow the court and the oppressed people of this world and this nation to ascertain as to the real interests and cooperative attitude of the Hearst family and in so doing show some form of repentance for the murder and suffering they have aided and profited from. And this good faith gesture is to be in the form of a token gesture to the oppressed people that they aid the corporate state in robbing and removing their rights to freedom and liberty. This gesture is to be in the form of food to the needy and the unemployed and to which the following instructions are directed to be followed to the letter. In closing, and speaking personally for myself and as a father of two children, I wish to say to Mr. Hurst and Mrs. Hurst, but speaking as a father, I am quite willing to lose both of my children if by that action I could save thousands of white, black, yellow, and red children from a life of suffering, exploitation, and murder. And I am therefore quite willing to carry out the execution of your daughter to save the life of starving men, women, and children of every race. And I am also, along with the loyal men and women of many races who love the people, quite willing to give our lives to freeing the people at any cost. And if, as you and others so naively believe, that we will lose... Let it be known that even in death we will win. For the very ashes of this fascist nation will mark our very graves. So, in there, he mentioned about the Irish and what was going on in Ireland at the same time. You see, because this is a global assault by the same people, using the same method on different land masses around the world. He brought up the Philippines and the American napalm bombings in Vietnam. All this stuff <clears throat> is done by somebody pretending to be us, but they ain't us. They pretending to um, be under the constitution of we the people, but they under the constitution of the corporate, Inc. Right? So, as long as we not seeing um, what we up against, we can't defend ourselves. So I'm trying to show y'all, I'm showing y'all, this is not new. This is what you call protracted struggle, which means a long drawn out struggle over a period of time, right? So the, um, the banner said 500 years of native resistance, 500 years of holding these motherfuckers back. Well, it's been over that now because it was 500 years. Um, from Columbus, 1492 in 1992, that's 500 years. Now it's the coup de grace. It's the grand finale. It's the big ending. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> it's always some motherfucker on here trolling, pretending to be one of us. Come in and try to start fights with the people in the comments because we ain't buying that bullshit no more and they trying to push the bullshit agenda. So let them troll. Let them come. Maybe they're going to get converted. You're going to convert that goddamn devil. That's what you do. 
right? You hit him with so many motherfucking facts that his whole motherfucking soul turned back on. He didn't come back alive. And I know these motherfuckers fucking with the live because they always do. So we can expect that anytime I'm trying to make some serious head wave, they're going to interfere. Right? They erased two lives back to back. Hopefully they won't erase this one so I don't have to because I'll do all this shit again tomorrow. <clears throat> I'll do all these videos right back again tomorrow. I don't give two shits. I'm not backing the fuck down. I'm not shutting the fuck up. I'm going to keep on giving y'all this information until y'all understand that each one teach one, we all might reach some. And the more we reach, God damn it, the motherfucker, more we get the power back. And the more we get the power back, the less they got a grip on us. And the less they got a grip on us, the more we can push the motherfuckers back off our shit. So, for those who are not aware, the United States Corporation is defunct now. It's closed. In 2017, they gave us back the power with the Indigenous Rights Act. Everything is controlled by the tribal chieftains. Only problem is, the people won't demand the chieftains be brought forth to administer the rights of the land under the matriarch. We can't even talk about the matriarchy until we get past this part where we have to um, call forth the chiefs. Right, so the writ been hit, been issued. They still dragging their feet because they don't believe that y'all are serious. They know we serious when they are. When you turn on social media and all you see is free Larry Hoover, every other fucking post. They know we serious. They know we serious when the uh, justice department is saying produce the chiefs. The writ is in the public domain, and y'all pass due. Right, then we start getting them to see. Right, so they got us under all of these illusions, and we didn't already put all of the pieces in the right place. Right, so um, Chucks and Pearls is gonna be the only one gonna be authorized to sign the paperwork for the corporation because that's the only existing person in the corporation with any juice right now. And the only reason they got any juice is to make sure that the paperwork matched the will of the people before they close the corporation permanently. And the people need to enforce their will by making their will known in the public domain. No secret squirrel shit, because they use secret squirrel shit to oppress us. Put that shit in the public domain. Write it or speak it. Right? Speaking it is ten times more powerful than writing it, but if some of us is too shy, right? So you write it. But as long as you put it in the public domain, it's enforceable, right? And it's a person on the land responsible for enforcing it, right? So the corporation is the one holding them hostage, and the remnant of the corporation is held together by the 25th Amendment transfer of power. The 25th Amendment transfer of power cannot transfer the power back to a president with dementia. So whatever they're telling y'all, they're not telling y'all the accurate information, right? So, Kamala is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the corporate United States of America. And she can sign the paperwork. The reason she can sign the paperwork because it's already known in the public domain prior to the colonoscopy of Joe Biden that um, he got Alzheimer's or dementia. His son put it out in the public domain because of the politicians making fun of his father's dementia. And he didn't like them making fun of his father's dementia, so therefore he made a motherfucking series of statements to confirm that Joseph Biden had dementia. Well, that was at least before he went to Gitmo. All y'all seeing now is a motherfucking series of actors and um, CGI and motherfucking bots. Ain't no Joe Biden in presidency right now. The president of the corporation is Kamala. The president of the de jure, we don't do presidents. We got chiefs on the land, right? So we know who the chiefs on the land is. We know what we what we need to do. I'm going to keep on bringing these receipts so till y'all got it clear to understand that once we stand up, the motherfucking table falls over and the game ends. 
And that's our job. So I got a caller in here that's been waiting for a minute. And I'm almost done. So I'm going to see who this is. Screenwriter 77. You got something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's going to come in or not. I got a question just came in. I ain't heard back from Dane. He probably shook because they probably so much on him because they don't want him to do that documentary and tell where the property at, where the trust's at, and standing on his motherfucking chief motherfucking feathers with the motherfucker uh, trust in order to claim that shit because he got the man hours and he got the study hours and he got the public motherfucking exposure hours required. Um... Ombre Brown. Okay, let's see it. The sister gonna come in. Hey, hey, hey. my girl, right there, girl. You you I'm told that shit up yesterday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Honestly, I just wanted to drop um one thing that I had um that came to me. Um, in regards to the three kings. So for all my astrology heads or the people who into the stars and everything else, um, I think this would kind of fit right along with the receipts. So Larry, I don't know if y'all know uh, his zodiac sign. He's a Sagittarius. Big Tuki is a Capricorn. And Chief Malik is a Pisces. So that's missing one yeah. element, right? Earth. Yeah, fine. The element of air. And we are in the age of what right now? Aquarius. So I that dropped on me. That dropped on my spirit that we are indeed that missing link for all of the elements to for everything to align. And I don't know if you have any tidbits for that, right? But that that's what was sitting on my heart because I'm like well, this is not a coincidence and this everything is kind of starting right now in Sagittarius season with Free Larry Hoover. We need to be air. All of us need to become air. Airbenders or something. Right. Right. Who is that over there? I don't know. There's somebody else in the car with us. It might have been the person that you was trying to add before. They didn't ever come in. It look like it look like they in here now. I know I heard somebody talking. Mm-hmm. Don't seem like they can hear us though. Yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. She said we need to become air. Wow, this is a... look, they be doing some funny style shit with right. my video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it. So it, it, you know, it's dark over there, so I don't know who that is. I can't see them face, but I did hear them talking. I heard them talking, but I'm not even sure if that was that person talking. Oh, Lord. Because they, they not responding to nothing we're saying. You notice that? Right. Is that me? Yeah, that's who me. Who said that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I didn't know I was on. I wasn't trying to come on. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just talking out loud. Oh wow. Oh okay. You you can exit out. Okay, sorry. <laughs> she had a little tidbit to add. Yeah, it, it was right on time though. Right, right. Like it, it matched up with what you're saying. So when you look at the 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 anime avatar, you got the fire nation, the water <laughs> nation, the earth nation, the air nation. They all benders. Right. Them the four major elements, but now when you put them all together, you get what you call the ether bender. This is what the avatar is trying to learn all the elements for. Right. So once he learned all the elements, then he can bend ether. And then once you can bend the ether, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you can bend reality. Right. But you got to master all four of the regular elements before you can work on the fifth element, the ether. But you remember the fifth element, according to the movie, was love. Right. And when he activated the fifth element, it automatically activated a combination of all five elements. Right. 
right? And we started this off with uh with Farrakhan, who is under the star and crescent and the five point stars, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, which is the five keys to independence and freedom. Right? Mm -hmm. So then it all ties back together on a tit for that tat, knock to a knockback. As above, so below. And here we go, round and round, do see do It's the square dance. Okay. It's but right the square there. is in the circle. And only mm -hmm. the mask can get the square out the circle. Right? Mm -hmm. Because the square is really four pieces of pie. Mm -hmm. But pie is 3.14. And that add up to eight. And eight is a B. And the B is the queen B. That mm -hmm. sits on top of the hive. So now we're talking about raising the great mother to the top of the hive, and the hive is the hideout. It's the honeycomb hideout. Right? Because bees make honey and honeycombs, and honeycombs is hid out in the beehive, and the beehive is Big Mama House because that's where the honey at. Oh my God. Okay. So we call the honey the money, because you know if you if you get the money, you get the honey. Mm-hmm. Right? But the money is green and the honey is gold. Right. And red, green, and gold, that's Jamaican colors because we started off with Farrakhan and that's a red flag. Damn. So the red, green, and gold is the Rasta knot. Mm -hmm. And the red, green, and gold is red for the blood and green is for the land and gold is for the wealth. But the red, the black, red, black, and green is red is for the blood, black is for the people that's on defense. Mm -hmm. And green is for the land that be utilized equal. That's a king's son knock on the 5% nation off the West Coast. <clears throat> and the king's son shines clean across the land back to his brothers from in New York. Right? Mm-hmm. But he reflected by Rakim. Mm. Right? So now we're talking about two masters knocking from LA to NY. Mm -hmm. Now that's a Laney flip. That's motherfucking Eminem. That's a 313 knock. Laney is, his, Laney is his stepdaughter. That's a left foot knock. Right? But Haley is his, is his real daughter. That's his right foot. Right, mm -hmm. so out the three one three flips a seven, and the seven is a master because G is the seventh letter made. Mm -hmm. And in masonry, G is for geometry, but in religion, G is for God. But in the hood, G is for gangster, mm -hmm. and gangster is a disciple mm -hmm. of the king. And the gangster disciple is the cold brick, according to the Peace Stone Nation. And the cold brick is a block of ice. Mm -hmm. That means the water sign is in the fixed position frozen state. That makes him a Scorpio. Because Scorpio is the only fixed position water and uh, water sign in the winter. Right. Right. So now we talk about a scorpion king. Mm -hmm. Right. So the scorpion king, in order to be the king, got to tell you how to ring the bells. That's an LL flip. Because mm -hmm. he got to rock the bells. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if LL rocked the bells and the ladies love LL, mm -hmm. is what that means. Cool James and James is Todd. And Todd 1 was the first hip hop inspired clothing line. Right? So now we got clothes on the line. We in mama, we in big mama backyard. Because she always hang her clothes out to dry. Right. But the only time she hang her clothes out to dry is after they've been washed. Mm -hmm. So now we getting all of the dirty laundry out in the open. Because mm -hmm. as we as we as we wash the dirty laundry, then the linen becomes white again. Mm -hmm. And the linen is the linen of the priestesses who wore the white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this shit. But yesterday you did your video you had on black. That's a black Madonna knot. What? And the black Madonna is the black maiden, the young lady that's just so happened to hold the high priestess seat. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
if that's the black Madonna, then where's the child? Mm -hmm. Remember your son came yeah. in at the end? Right. So this a big mama knot, black Madonna and child on the free Larry Hoover to let us know the state of course. Right? So now, you gave the lecture mm -hmm. just as good as I would have gave the lecture. And that's a mirror reflection. Reflection. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Right? So when I flipped you the key, you flipped the key back to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the key is a kilogram. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a drug lord knock off the cocaine. And cocaine in the hood, we call that a white girl. Right. Unless you're a pool shooter, the white girl is the cue ball. And the cue ball is the ball you use to clear the table. So the cue ball becomes the catch paw in sacred eight ball. And the sacred eight ball is the eight. When the six flip nine, six over top of nine makes an eight. And the eight, eight ball got to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But the middle is the 13th seat. That's big mama seat. That's Tawaret in ancient Kemet. That's Big Mama. Yeah. Represented by the water horse or the hippopotamus is what they call it. Right? Mm -hmm. And the reason they use the hippopotamus is because she's fiercely protective of her children. Right? And you don't know who she is until she pop up out the water about her babies. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the great water beast rising from the water. Right. Right. But on land, the hippopotamus is not a hippopotamus. The hippopotamus is a rhino. Right. But you got two kind of rhinos. You got the one with one corn, one cone horn, and you got the one with two cone horns. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you put them together, that's three corn horns. Now we got three husks of corn. Off the three cones. And the three cones is representative of the gifts that come with the three kings. Mm. And the three kings come, pum 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 to see the little boy blue playing his drum. And the little boy had no gift to give, pum 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 All he had was his tune to sing, pum 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 <laughs> Little boy blue is playing his drum. Right. But what's the drum? The drum is the message across the land using the music. And Tupac <laughs> said, that's why I keep my shit beat bumping warlike. Why? Because we at war. Mm. Right? So my nephew noticed today when I was watching wrestling that war is raw spelled backwards. Mm. Which flips a song that I wrote. Murder, 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 red rum. A pound on my chest because they took my war drum. Okay. My African roots say rally the troops. Mm. My great native spirits say the end get nearer. Mm. Murder, 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 red rum. A mm. pound on my chest because they took my war drum. Yeah. African roots <laughs> say rally the troops. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. <All> right. <laughs> so the music is reflective of the message because the message is in the music. At least that's what the OJ said. Right. And if the message is in the music, it got to be a mystical communication that keep us coming together. At least mm -hmm. that's what's coming over the hills and valleys from Buju Bantan. Mm -hmm. Now that's a roster knock. Right? Mm -hmm. But in the gospel song, Sam Cook said there's a message in every song we sing. If you right. can catch it, you can catch it. If you can't, you can't. Right. Because everything ain't for everybody, and yeah. everybody ain't for everything. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But he who can capture the message from the song that they sing, they can mm -hmm. put it all together. Now, Gil Scott said that's the ghetto code. Did it did it did it did it Right? Mm-hmm. So the ghetto code is a code that we speak in their face behind their back where they never know that we talking like that. Toe to toe, tit for tat. You tap me, I tap you back. Right. That's a game of tag. Who's it? Right? Mm -hmm. So now that we know who is it, that's the mm -hmm. king. That's Larry. Mm -hmm. So in the game of tag and the knock around, 
everybody bumps shoulders and they all lined up across the land and all you can <laughs> see is man and woman protecting the children. Right. So the women is the marching matriarchs, but the man is the gorilla rolling across the land. And all of the gorillas got a gorilla grip. That means they are masters. That's, a, that's an army of chiefs. So if all of the chiefs can hold a position, then the last one on the mission can come put all of the positions into one order. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to give us a new world order, but we wanted to reorder this old world. Take it back to the beginning from Alpha to the Omega. So we take the upside down and we turn it around and flip it back right and clean the plain sight. Right. Everything they did to us, we drag it out in the open so that we can undo everything that they did. Right. And the only way we can undo the everything that they did is we got to be in with the shits. Gotta know what's going on. So we took all that shit they gave us. We put it in a big ass pile and we watered it. And let it keep, sit in the sun until it putrefied. Mm -hmm. It broke down into motherfucking compost and the compost turned into fertile black soil. Mm -hmm. Then we took that shit that they dumped up on us and made the soil out of and we planted our seeds. Mm -hmm. So everything mm -hmm. they use to hold us down, we're using the same shit to come back up. Okay. Right? So now it becomes a game of tennis because we're returning to serve. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a Serena and Venus Williams knock. Right. On a high-speed serve. Oh, but my father's name was Arthur, and that's an ash flip because Arthur Ash, they infected him with HIV so they could kill his ass off because they didn't want him talking that radical shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we all know that the phoenix rise from his ashes. Right. And if Arthur is ashes, then the phoenix that rise must be his son. Right. <laughs> So this is how we this is how we tie shit together. Right. Make shit match up, like flipping cards and concentration. Just back and forth. Yep. But when it all clicked, we understand how the mind worked, then we can unlock the mind from the prison they put it in by connecting mm -hmm. the dots. Mm-hmm. And we are the dots. Yes. That shit is crazy. And it's called dot art. Dot art. Dot art is done with a pen. Mm, and my son just... flipped me a pen behind the ear. That means, Daddy, I'm listening. Are you listening to me? Because the pen flip was a nip flip. Because nip is my mirror. Because mm -hmm. he's from, Crin he's from uh, Crenshaw. I'm from Kershaw. He from the blue, I'm from the blue. It's just like <laughs> everything. And the mirrors in the the mirrors are the man. Right? Mm -hmm. So Nip was was little Ra Ra from Outlaw. You remember that song Outlaw? Mm-mm. How old is you, Ra Ra? I'm 11. What you gonna be when you grow up? Man, I'm gonna be an outlaw. Mm -hmm. 22 years later, I ain't nothing like a rap nigga. Right. <laughs> Why? Because I'm an outlaw, baby. An outlaw. Who are the outlaws? The outlaws is the bikers. Mm. And my mama was the queen, the queen of the outlaw vice lord bikers. Queen of the Queen of the Vice Lords, Big Red. Mm -hmm. And she married my daddy, Arthur, which was the fourth on the Blue Lodge. That means he held the motherfucking keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He was the king of kings on the blue. Right? Mm -hmm. But my daughter is a peace stone. Right. My stepdaughter is a peace stone. My stepson a peace stone. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck in the middle of Vice Lords and Stones. But everybody on my level is RGs. Right. That means my generation, those who grew up with me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's the way that you bring it all together is you got to tie all of the family lines. Right. 
and they all intersect with me. Right. The G in the middle. And that's Grind the Gorilla. That's Ride the GD Gorilla. Mm. Right. You holding <laughs> everything down. So GD Ride knocked for the king to come forth so the people can see that King Kong is in the motherfucking building. Mm. Except King Kong ain't got shit on me. Because I'm Grind the motherfucking Gorilla G. Okay. Right? Me that means I'm a telepathic gorilla with the instincts of a motherfucking sick ape. And the mm -hmm. sick ape is the soldier and Illuminati are present everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's a Machiavelli knock to a motherfucking pedal. Right? That's mm -hmm. a Medici knock on the rising prince being advised by a military and political advisor from a distance. Right? Mm -hmm. So he who is wise, let him count the waves. Because the ways of men, there are many. Right. Right. So if you can count the many ways of men, then you can see the things that's not a man. Right. In other words, comparative analysis makes the anomalies stand out clean and simple. Even if they look like us, they don't feel like us. Right. Right. They don't move like us. Right. They don't love like us. Right. They're not loyal like us. Mm hmm See, we might fight amongst each other, but I promise you this. We'll burn this bitch down if you get us pissed. <laughs> That's the lingo. That's the culture. And that's wow. how it works. <clears throat> Somebody said you need to do a Zoom. Yeah, I, I was on with Blue Pill last night. Yeah, and, uh, Red Pill, and we uh, we had a fucking blast. That's I was in, I, I didn't know how to invite nobody. I was on somebody else's channel, but I sure was having fun talking that to them brothers. Good. They know what the fuck going on, and it's yeah, easy. It's, I'm used it. to having to. I'm using to have to translate physics into mm -hmm. basic addition in order mm -hmm. for people to get it. To I don't got to do that with them. I don't right. got to like slow down and break every piece down. Right. That was I stayed on the whole night. I was like, I got I gotta <laughs> catch this. Even what they were saying, I caught the tail end of it. But they was talking mm -hmm. about the heart and the four vows. And it's crazy because lately it's like I don't wanna scare nobody, but it's like something my heart been kinda achy or it just feel like it's it's just a heart chakra. Damn, my right arm it's was just like thing. aching yeah. and you talked about the right arm so when they was putting like you said all the physicalities to it yeah it was... so the right the right side is the gd side mm. we flip our hats to the right mm -hmm. and the peace don't flip their hats to the left mm. right Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the video that I just did, I'm mm -hmm. showing the, the the phone in there, and it flips the peace song's hat to the right on mm -hmm. the mirror flip. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we meet each other, we mirror opposites. Blue lies, red lies, right hand, left hand. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, once we put it together, we realize what's going on. We're talking to each other in sign language. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, if you go to Cali, the Crips where they had to the left, Bloods where they had to the right, they did the mm -hmm. exact opposite. Right. They telling us something. Right. Now, when you go out to California, your Crips is your kin folks. If you folks, if you uh, peoples, then you a blood. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you always got to check in with the OG to make sure you're on the roll properly. This is to keep you safe in their community and for them not to, to know who you are when you get there. That's why they say check in. Mm -hmm. The enemy don't want us to check in because he want to he wanna immediately set us at odds with each other. The game rules, or we should say the tribe rules is when you come to the tribe, you send a scout chief to check in, let him know you're on your way. When you get there, you meet the chief on the land. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So anybody coming to Detroit need to be meeting with Trick Trick because Trick Trick is the one that all of the local chiefs around the area said they check in with. 
So when you see Jim Jones or if you see Snoop, if you see them pop up in Detroit, they might be with Eminem, but they checked in with Trick Trick. Right. That's his job in the tribe. He's supposed to go out front and mm -hmm. see who at the door. Period. This is how you keep the imposters out. Because those who know the culture follow the rules. Those who respect the culture. Those who don't know the culture won't follow the rules because they have no respect for the culture. So when you go back and you see Big U went to Calif I mean, to New York, he's from California, but he checked in with Jim Jones. Right? Right. So they showing you in real time. So when you see the concert, Drake and Kanye, mm -hmm. the choir director is a mirror image of Big U. Mm -hmm. right why is he a mirror a reflection of big you because that's to tell us who know the lingo that all of the ogs on the west coast signed off on that concert that means that the ogs is behind free larry hoover we just got to get the message to the grassroots right once we get the message to the grassroots they're going to have to go check in with the ogs to determine are we really in peace treaty mode? And are we really about to go to war with these enemies if they don't get the fuck off our shit? Right. And this is how they're going to confirm where we at in the process. Because we're going to get the message from Cali first. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's going to be like a, it's going to be like a crimson tide rolling across the land from west to east. So on the on the West Coast, mm -hmm. red and blue united makes the purple passion. And the purple passion is a drink. Mm -hmm. But it's called a purple passion because it was originally for the royalty. But we said, fuck it. Since y'all call us thugs, we're going to do some thug passion. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. So from the thug passion, then you get the 50 flip off the vitamin water. I knew, I knew. Mm -hmm. Now 50 is Curtis Jackson and the unstoppable mm -hmm. conjure comes from the Curtis Jackson conjure, which is the matriarchs march of 50 sisters. Mm -hmm. The 50 sisters have already marched. The only thing left now is for us to see the, the three kings on the land. Mm -hmm. 50 cent. Mm -hmm. That last um that that episode seven, I caught that, and that whole episode was all about. I don't know if y'all saw that episode. I'm sure y'all did, but it was all about coming together for the greater good. They kept saying that, coming mm -hmm. together for the greater good. Like everybody was just all working together, and I'm like, damn. 50 I'm I, I, I'm number seven. Number seven. Yeah. I'm the seventh out of seventh out of seventh. My grandfather was a seven. My mama was a seven. And I'm a seven. That's a zigzag zig on the sevens. And we all know zigzag zig is a lie. And a lie is, uh, is uh, Clarence 13X, a.k.a. Pudding. Father God, a lie. That's a 5% nation lie. Mm-hmm. In the five percent nation, believe in protecting man, woman, and child. Mm -hmm. Right. So we secure the earth, the earths, as we walk as gods. But if we don't walk as gods, we can't secure the earth. Right. So the enemy goal is to keep us inferior in mind, because as mm -hmm. long as you think inferior, you act inferior. Miseducation of a Negro. Right. So when you. When you know what they use to oppress economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war, and health. Mm -hmm. So the nine areas of people activity given by Neely Fuller, I add health because health is the underlining balancer of all of those other ones. Mm -hmm. right? right? So um, the... Next thing we have to do is overcome the obstacle by each one teach one, right? And the right. obstacle is miseducation. Expose the miseducation. What's the miseducation? That we came from Africa. That's the great white lie. That's Moby Dick. 
That big white whale was a little white lie the whole time. The great white lie. Right. So we thought that the whale was unconquerable, but he was just a little white lie. All you had to do was know who you is, and then you know who they was. And if you know who you is, and you know who they was, and you know how to get rid of them. And the only way to get rid of them is to alert all the clans across the land that we being invaded by some foreign men. And we know who they are. They call themselves the Conquistadors, the Tudors, the, um, what they call the uh, Etruscan Moors. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. they the ones who found it wrong do we forget all roads right. lead back to Rome mm -hmm. why do they keep telling us that because if you trace this back economically educationally entertainment religiously politically sexually or militarily you end up in Rome because mm -hmm. they control all that shit since then under the auspices of the Vatican in the the Pope becomes the emperor by default because the Pope was the one who crowns the emperor. But since he never crowned an emperor, the Pope assumed the position as the emperor. In order to have be the emperor, you need three crowns. You need the religious crown, the military crown, and the political crown. Mm -hmm. So then the Pope got three crowns, but he also carried a scepter. Right, and the scepter is uh, the what they call the crook. It's the crook and the flail. The crook is uh, the the shepherd's staff with the hook on it, but he got a straight one Man, with a ball on it. Literally, just talking about the shepherd's crook today. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I did a ritual. I did a I did a ritual. Um, some candle magic, and at the bottom, I always read it. And I didn't know what a crook was, but it was like, it looked like a, almost like a long question mark. Yep. And I saw a guy that posted a picture of it as a symbol. I'm like, oh, that's a hieroglyphic. So I asked him what he was, and he literally just told me a couple of hours ago, that's a shepherd's crook. Yeah. So the crook, you need the flail. The crook is to pull the, the lamb from the bushes. The flail is to make the lamb go where you where the herd go where you want them to go right now what's the lamb that was in the bushes it was the sacrificial lamb that replaced the son that was set to be sacrificed by abraham that was ishmael but the, the so-called jews would say it's isaac because they supplanters anyway right so Ishmael became one of the tribes of Midian over time. Right? And Midian is the median, and Midian is in the middle. In the middle is the bump straight. So that's the straight staff. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you got a straight staff, then you got a crook, and then you got a flail. That's an X with a line running down the middle of it. It's an old symbol. So the subconscious emanation puts all this shit out in the forefront. Right. And the hierophant popped out. <laughs> Man. Somebody put in the comments, shuffling my tarot cards and the hierophant It's like, really? Out. Somebody say my eye twitching like hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So Man. I want to I'm to get off, save this, and then I'm yeah. going to come back because I got some callers trying to come in and ask questions. Yep. But Every time I do, the last two times I did that, IG cut me out. I know. So I'm going to say this here so we got this recorded, and mm -hmm. then I'm going to come right back on for, uh, for, the, uh, for the audience. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, should I go ahead and close out, and then you can close out? Yeah. Uh.